friends, this is the Bijou Baker. I'm Maria. Today we're going to make a lemon meringue pie. Yay, 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 yay. It is so good. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Anyway, um, below is the link on how to make this perfect pie crust. It's, I'm going to tell you, it's all technique and I show you every trick and tip I could think of to help you with this process because I know pies are intimidating. I don't know why. I don't know why. Um, because you see, you, well, I do know why and, and there's no reason for it to be intimidating. Follow the recipe and use your own recipe if you have a favorite pie crust, but follow the tips and techniques on the pie crust and you can't lose. So this meringue, um, it's my one of my do my granddaughter's favorite pies and her birthday is coming up so I said all right well let me just go ahead and make a, a yummy dessert for her. Um, <laughs> for me. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. <clears throat> I'm not a huge meringue fan as far as the lemon. I if I'm making it for myself I'm gonna pile it high with sweetened whipped cream. <laughs> you can use um you can use it a, a, cream cheese kind of topping on it. And I mean, there's a lot of stuff you can do with the base of this lemon meringue pie. Um, the meringue, traditional, we'll go with that. So here is the list of, um, you got the pie crust below, and then here's the list of ingredients for this uh, pie. I want to <clears throat> touch over, especially this pie and, and pies in general. They're probably one of the most intimidating desserts that people, that affect people. And I'm, gonna, I'm not going to lie, it, they intimidated me for the longest time. And one day I said, I'm not, I'm not having that. And I set out to make every pie I could think of for, to test recipes, but also to overcome that, that intimidating factor. You know, it's like, no. I'm better than a pie. Well, not not the lemon meringue pie. I'm not better than that. <laughs> I'll tell you how I overcome any recipe that could intimidate me. Okay, I break it down. I mean, I break it down. So I'm looking at a recipe. I'm looking at the ingredients. I said, okay, well, I have that, and that's easy to get. And okay, so I simplify the ingredient list. I don't look at the whole thing and just say, oh my gosh. No, flour, got it. Baking soda, got it. Sugar, got it. You have these things. So just break that down individually. Now here's a part where it gets really corny. But it works. I read the directions and you really do always want to read directions before you start your recipe. Look at the list, read the directions, and then get your mise en place and, and take it from there. So I, I look at the directions and I literally, <laughs> I get into a zen. I close my eyes and I visualize myself doing, you know, sift the flour. Okay, I can sift the flour. That's no big deal. You know, cream the butter. Okay, I know that. I mean, I literally visualize every step. And when you do that, you you know you can cream the flour. You can sift the, uh, don't cream the flour. <laughs> you know, every step broken down makes it easy. Before you know it, you're eating a pie. And so I... <laughs> It's one of my favorite sounds ever. That and babies laughing. <laughs> um, so break down your recipes, guys, and, and read them and visualize them. And uh, does it work? Well, here I am making a pie. It works every time. And some, especially French recipes. I love French cuisine. Oh my gosh, I love it because it's so complicated. It's not complicated. Um, their terminology kind of cracks me up because, you know, they say, you know, get your um, Bay Marie. And I'm going, a Bay Marie? What aisle is it in? Is that, so you look up Bay Marie, it's like a water bath. It's like, that's it? Why didn't you just say it? So the fanciness of it goes away once you know exactly what's going on. And when you know, it's easy, right? Shut up, Maria, let's make a pie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I showed you how to make the pie crust yesterday, and it's here, ready to be used. Um, and I'm going to show you how to uh, pre-bake the pie. Um, for this, you want the 
the crust already done. And come on. Okay, so you have it pliable. Remember, you have to start off with pliable. If there's parts that were too chilled and it cracks, like, like this part here, first off, don't worry about it. It all pinches it together really nicely. I don't know if you can, but I can see all the cinnamon in here and it's saying, hi, Maria. Okay, so for for the um, edge, let me let me get let me show you what one. There's so many ways to get your edges. Okay, so we're gonna fold it under, um, but I have some pieces there. They're just pretty uneven, so I'm gonna go ahead and just trim, not a lot, because I'm gonna fold it under. I'm just gonna trim the edges just to make it appealing. Can you see that? I could have had this done before, but I don't want to um, hide anything from you guys. Well, that's probably not entirely true. <laughs> I'm sure that there are several things I'd like to hide, but I'd rather you see my flaws and know that you can handle them and try to just impress you with stuff that doesn't work. So now it's pliable. It's gonna get folded underneath, and don't worry about the cracking part. Some pie crusts do shrink a bit. I don't, geez, now I gotta remember. I don't think this one does. But we're good. We are so good. So when you uh, pre-bake a pie, you are essentially making it ready <laughs> to eat right then and there. So you could actually just make a pie crust. And I know people who really like pie crust enough to, to do just that. All right, so can you see how it just kind of, all right? So then you decorate it. You can you can take your fork and you can make those pretty lines and, and that's okay. Or you can take you know your fingertips and just, you know, Push this one in and these two out so you're kind of want them to meet in the middle. I'll just do that because I don't know if you've ever done that before. So you take it from where you left off, make a V and push. So I'll just stick, I'll just continue with it. Okay, that looks that looks kind of pretty. All right, so now you're gonna you're gonna pierce the bottom of this a lot. I I do a lot. All the way. I've seen some people only do it a few times. Okay, <laughs> I do it a lot. This will have the um, heat come out. Otherwise, you uh, this is part one of why you won't get bubbly bottoms. <laughs> Isn't that a song? Or is it a drink? <laughs> and then the sides here too. All right, once you have it pierced pretty good, all right, you're going to take a piece of parchment paper I've already fit it to this side. Up the sides and put in some weight. Be it, um, it could be pinto beans, it could be rice, it could be pie weights, whatever. It goes in the oven 350 for about 20 minutes. The rest of the um, pie is going to be made on the stove, well, the custard. 
the meringue I'm actually not going to make until tomorrow. I'm going to have this sit overnight. So, so I come to the stove for this part, but the pie crust, okay. Um, it's going to bake. I'm going to take it out and I'm going to remove the parchment paper and the rice. And I'm going to put it back in after I wash it with a little egg wash, just to kind of give it a good golden color. And I'm going to put it back in for another 10 minutes. Good, good stuff. All right, so this has been baking and ready to go. I'm just going to remove this. Oh, that's nice. And I have an egg wash. That looks so pretty. I have an egg wash. I'm just going to kind of coat the bottom and the sides and the top. I can smell that cinnamon. And yeah, even with a lemon meringue pie, the cinnamon is the way to go. Let me just go ahead and finish this. I'm sure you don't want to watch. Okay, in the meantime, on my stove top at a medium high, I put my sugar and my zest. It's kind of funny because you can do this part overnight and you'll end up with lemon sugar. <laughs> it just kind of intensifies the flavor. That, that's, that's all, that's all. I'm going to add cornstarch. And I'm gonna whisk this up. to incorporate. Now over here I've got my my eggs and I just I just gave a good scramble. Just so nice and thick, pretty color. All right, now I'm going to add my lemon juice. Oh, all the seeds stayed at the bottom. <laughs> and the water. And I'm gonna whisk. This is the part where you really kind of, I see seeds. I see seeds of green. <laughs> Stop it. Oh, Maria, you just really failed this. <laughs> My money's on the seeds. There, now I'm happy. I heard you. I heard you say I missed one. Thank you. All right. So this gets whisked. And it's a it's a funky color. It's not yellow, but it's not white. It's like a yellow milky color. <laughs> Let's go with that. As I keep whisking, I'm going to be looking for more seeds. I mean, if I miss three... Maybe I'll make a prize. If you get a seed, you get a dollar. All right, so I'm just gonna keep whisking. And this is essentially like lemon curd, okay? But but the portions are different because you, a lemon curd recipe is only gonna make, you know, maybe like a cup and a half-ish. Um, this needs to fill a pie tin, so we need to increase the volume as well as the flavor and the intensity of the lemon so that's why i add so much lemon juice and these lemons these lemons were just not going to play well they were not going to give me juice i think i ended up using like 11 11 of those little buggers to give me a to give me a cup it, that's a lot yeah, come on you guys you failed here so some some lemons may 
you, you might only need four depending on how many how juicy the lemons are so there you go and just keep on going I noticed that I forgot to add the salt so I just plopped it in <laughs> it's so it's already dissolved <laughs> don't worry about that it's not the that is not that big of a deal just get it in there. so you can see it changing colors it's gonna get thick uh, kind of like a roux well maybe not that thick but it's it's gonna get thick um, yep nowhere near so we keep we keep on whisking and you definitely want to keep this mo uh, moving so even if you think you're not doing anything stir it whisk it move it that's all that counts when you're whisking and you can see your whisk lines uh, leave a trail you're getting close you see that you see those lines i'm keeping it off the heat <laughs> because it's really going to just it bubbles you want that i just have to i want to control it better this electric oven i'm telling you it's just going to do the death of me Ooh, it's pretty i'm going to turn it off see even though it's turned off the heat is still there that's that's uh, it's all right <laughs> okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to temper the eggs that means i need to bring them to um an equal temperature i need this to be the same temperature as that kind of crazy right otherwise it's going to cook these yolks so i'm going to put them in just a little at a time and really move the heck out of my fork Okay, that's warm. I'm not okay with it because this is really hot. So I'm going to go a little bit more. Really slowly. Because if you do do it too much, you will cook the eggs. You'll have scrambled egg yolks. Mm -mm -mm. One more. I'm saying one more only because my bowl, <laughs> my bowl will only take one more. This is hot. That's good. So let's put that in, in here. <laughs> and this thing kind of splattered me. That hurt. But... I got to taste it. <laughs> That's good. So, I'm going to whisk and pour it in. I'm going to turn the heat to a medium low and cook it for about, I don't know, two to three minutes maybe. And you really, really want to whisk this. So nice. I'm only moving my pan around so I can not do this wonky angle. <laughs> you 
you do whatever you need to do though. It's gonna come to a good boil. Oh, that woman. Get into my belly. All right. All right, at this point, I'm gonna put in uh, dabs of butter. Just, I got about six tablespoons. Oh, some of them are softer than others. That's all right. This will give it a, a creaminess and a shine. And then just keep going until the butter's dissolved. going to sit overnight and and get firm and good okay I want to ask you guys a question I've since I've moved to Arizona I've always only ever had gas stoves and ovens this electric oven I'm telling you, I hate it <clears throat> I don't I don't like it so much no I hate it the oven I don't Mine doesn't brown. Now, is that because mine's broken or is it because electric ovens don't brown? Do you have an electric oven? And if you do, does, does your goodies brown? I make these beautiful um, biscuits and they are perfect and they're cooked and they're absolutely amazing, but they're not brown and that drives me nuts. There's one sweet spot in, in the oven and that's that's all I got. The other parts, I mean, I know exactly which which burner is hotter and which one is lower. Is is that normal too? I mean, I assume they all burn the same temperature. Um, Saying the reason I said all that is because I don't know if I want to put this back in the oven to toast the meringue, or if I want to just use a uh, food torch. I don't want to toast it, toast it. Uh, I want it to be that beautiful golden brown color. So I'm gonna be up in the air for a minute on, on how to uh, how to handle that part. But if you do have an electric um, unit, tell me what you think about it. Tell me if, if maybe maybe my oven's off. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first. Yeah, and, and you actually really should get your oven calibrated if you use it a lot. You should get it calibrated like once a year just to keep the temperature uh, good and, and tight and perfect. So if you didn't know that. All right. So let me show you this pie crust. Okay, so the first thing you've probably seen is the is the yellow. That's that's the egg yolk. It's cooked. It's fully cooked and baked right into there. That's kind of cool. Um, it would really keep things from from seeping and making your your crust soggy. You can see that it did shrink a little bit. I know I had two recipes. One did and one didn't. And yeah, I think it's a super buttery one that. That did shrink. I, I I am absolutely okay with that. So this is going to cool completely where I can touch it, and then I'll fill it. Okay, my crust is completely cooled to the touch, and I'm just going to pour it in. This looks like it might be too much. Oh, rats. <laughs> I could probably find something to do with the rest. I'm taking it all the way up. I think that's, I think that's it. Oh, boy. Snack. <laughs> All right. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm gonna cover this with plastic wrap. The filling. That way there's no film. And then this is going to go in the refrigerator overnight. We'll be back tomorrow. 
Salud. <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm, I'm probably just joking, but I am going to taste it. <laughs> That's just been sitting here. Oh, hello. That's just been sitting here for a couple minutes and it's getting pretty, pretty firm. But this baby's hot. <laughs> yes. I want to give you a bite. Ooh, it's that and mm, that all at the same time. Sweet and tart. Kind of like me. <laughs> Probably a little more tart. Oh my god, this is so good. <laughs> yeah, tomorrow's. Tomorrow's forever away. I want this already in my plate. So tomorrow we're going to make the um, meringue. Let this sit. This is great for parties, you guys, because you can do this part ahead of time and not worry about it. The meringue, it's a very finicky little baby. Um, it's quite yummy because it's, it's the um, sweet. <laughs> I don't know where that was going. Um, but meringue will start to melt or sweat or cry or whatever, whatever you want to call it. It gets running. It gets wet. So I'm not going to make that until just before we're ready to um, serve it. And then I'm going to let that come to room temperature. So if I'm going to serve it at five, I'm going to make the meringue about one. Finish it. Let it chill for a few hours or set, you know. And then dig into that baby. So... I'll see you tomorrow. Well, I'll see you, in, see you in just a minute. <sighs> okay, day two. So, time for the meringue. As far as I can, as far as I can think, this is the absolute most basic. Uh, meringue for your lemon meringue pie nothing special i like it a little bit sweeter um but again like i said the the meringue itself is not my part of the pie that i like i kind of just give it to those who like and then just eat up the <laughs> lemon curd and crust um but this is good meringue and and it's a little bit sweeter so if you don't like it that way then just kind of cut back on the sugar um and everything else stays the same i'm going to make a um, simple syrup with a half cup of half cup of sugar one cup of sugar and half cup of water usually a simple syrup is equal parts but I wanted it sweeter and thicker uh, so I'm gonna I'm just gonna cook this up it should reach about I don't know about 240 to 35 right about there and then that will also help um, pasteurize the eggs in the meringue so let's go play okay so I've got my my sugar and my water boiling I want it to get I don't know about 235 240 right around there and then this will also help pasteurize the eggs just boil away okay so that's done it's time for the meringue I've got four large egg whites here now I made this lemon meringue pie. It's a mile high lemon meringue pie. Beautiful, right? If you like lemon, if you like the meringue part, that's the pie for you, baby. In that case, everything stayed the same. I just used five yolks, uh, five egg whites, just to give it more. Um, this, this one, I kind of want more equal. Uh, parts lemon pie to meringue so and this one here is really the most traditional so I'm just going to whisk my egg whites oh I should plug it in <laughs> I've heard it said that the uh, mixers work better with electricity <laughs> let's try it Aww. all right I'm going to whisk this slowly pick up the speed and then I'm going to add a quarter teaspoon of cream of tartar.
soft peaks. That means I want them to kind of flop over. I don't want them to stick up straight. Now I'm going to add in that hot syrup. I'm going to do it slowly, but I'm going to put it on high speed. I want to show you that syrup. You see how thick it's got? It's not, it's not, like I said, it's not gelatinous thick, but it's definitely not water. Okay, so let's pour that in. Well, such is a life of doing your own videos. It turns out I did not record the part where I poured the liquid in, but it's in there. Rats, I'm so sorry. So what I did was I literally just slowly drizzled it in, kept it on high, and let it work its way in. And this is what it's just continuing to do. I'm sorry. I want stiff peaks. Oh, guess what I got? Perfect. That's the kind of little tips we want. You can even feel a consistency change right here. Sweet. Let's top this baby. Okay, so I'm going to let this cool completely before I put it on my cold uh, lemon meringue. But this meringue, that's really good. Mm. I would eat this. I would, I would I would eat this. I'm not a meringue fan, but this one on top of the pie, I can't wait. Yes. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. That's so darn good. Ah. Okay. This is, you can see it a little jiggly. It should it should be okay to cut when you get a nice clean cut, but let me tell you what, I'm not gonna apologize if it if it kind of just smushes down because it's so amazing. If you want it even thicker, just increase the cornstarch when you're making it. Um, I would do one tablespoon. If you want it really thick, do two. I wouldn't do more than that because then it's just like a, it's just like a, a mess. <laughs> well, to me, in my opinion. All right, so away we go with this wonderful stuff. And I'm, I'm just going to pile it on. There's actually quite a bit here if you wanted to, you know, still keep with the um, mile high fame. Take it all the way to the edges. And you know, you just you just do you just do what you like. You put on more, you put on less. Um, I'm not gonna put on a whole lot, but I am gonna seal all these edges. You see that? I'm just gonna make sure that they contact with the crust all around. Okay, and here's where you kind of really want to put in your flare and your whisks and if you mix it up again you're not going to get this it'll get back to this beautiful meringue as opposed to these um spotty bubbly <laughs> parts so and for the top i definitely want the meringue because i want to i want to do peaks and so i'm going to give it a quick whisk put another I don't know, another layer on top, and then that'll let me have my play time. Because as it sits, it will the air will start to really expand, I guess. I don't know what the heck it does, but it changes its consistency. So give it a quick whisk before you use it. And then you get these beautiful little peaks. Now, I have to tell you, and here's a part that's kind of really hard for me. Um, I think I may have said this a few times. I hate my electric oven. I don't know if it's me or if it's my oven or if all electric ovens don't toast, but mine doesn't, mine, it doesn't brown well. 
Now you could, at this point, you could put it in the oven for at 400 degrees for about 15 to 20 minutes or until the peaks start to brown. I don't want to because I don't want the um the consistency of the meringue of the of the lemon to change. I don't want it to get soft again. So I'm going to use a, a food torch. <laughs> So that's it. That is, that's the lemon meringue pie. Again, take every step, break it down and um, conquer it. It's, this is the pie you want. Okay, so it, it did kind of fall in the middle. I don't care. I cannot believe how good the meringue is. <laughs> Can I forget? Oh my God, that is so good, that meringue. I forget, I did forget. I haven't made the lemon meringue part in a long time. I usually make whipped cream on top of it. <laughs> okay, I'm happy now. I'm happy. I am happy. Okay, my friends, give this a shot. You'll be thrilled with it. Until next time, happy baking. Ah, that was fun. Don't forget to like and subscribe.